Let's begin with an overview of the spinal cord. The spinal cord is encased in a bony vertebral column, and it's attached to the brainstem. The spinal cord is the major conduit of information from the skin, joints, muscles, and organs to the brain, and vice versa. The spinal cord communicates via the spinal nerves. The nerves exit the spinal cord through notches between vertebrae, with each nerve splitting and attaching to the spinal cord through the dorsal and ventral roots. The dorsal root carries sensation into the central nervous system and the ventral root carries information from the central nervous system into the peripheral nervous system, typically motor commands. The spinal cord structure. The spinal cord is long and thin, approximately one inch, except for the cervical and lumbar enlargements. It's a collection of nerves from the brain that extends to approximately the second lumbar vertebra. The spinal cord is bathed in cerebral spinal fluid and transmits information from the periphery to the brain and back. It's divided into four main regions, the cervical spinal cord, the thoracic spinal cord, the lumbar, and sacral spinal cord. Spinal compartments and the spinal nerves. This image depicts a spinal cord, including the dura mater and pia mater coverings, the gray matter and white matter. Also the spinal nerve. The dorsal root ganglion is attached to the spinal nerve as well as the ventral root. The spinal cord is a neural tube divided into 30 spinal segments, each with its own pair of nerves, one on each side. Each segment receives fibers from sensory receptors of the part of the body adjacent to it and sends back fibers to the muscles for motor function. Each segment functions relatively independently. However, the fibers from the adjacent segments interconnect the segments and coordinate their activity. The segments are named by the vertebrae that are next to it. Therefore, there's a cervical, thoracic, lumbar, and sacral region of the spinal cord segments. The dorsal root ganglia. The dorsal root ganglia are present at each spinal segment and each pair of dorsal root ganglia contains sensory neuron cell bodies. Adjacent to the dorsal root is the ventral root, and it contains the axons of motor neurons. Together, the dorsal root and ventral root form the spinal nerve. As such, these spinal nerves are mixed nerves because they contain both sensory and motor nerve fibers. The following is a clinical note on spinal anesthesia. Spinal anesthesia is a technique used to deliver local anesthetic drugs into the subarachnoid space. The onset of drug action is typically 5 minutes and can involve neuromuscular blockade. Epidural anesthesia, on the other hand, is a form of regional anesthesia. This involves the ejection of drugs into the epidural space. The main difference between these two techniques are the location of the injection, epidural space versus subarachnoid space for spinal anesthesia, and the spinal level. Spinal anesthesia must be delivered below the second lumbar vertebrae, whereas an epidural can be given at a thoracic or lumbar location. The spinal cord and the brain have special coverings made up of three layers. These coverings are known as the meninges. The three layers are the dura matter, the arachnoid matter, and the pia matter. These layers offer protection for the spinal cord, as well as being a passageway for blood vessels into the area. The layers extend up to and are continuous with the similar meninges of the brain. The outermost layer is the dura matter, and this overlies the arachnoid matter. The dura mater is a tough, fibrous covering made up of dense, irregular connective tissue, and this is within layers of simple squamous epithelium. The dura mater contains the cerebral spinal fluid within the central nervous system. It's attached to the skull, the first and second cervical vertebrae, and the posterior longitudinal ligament. 
The dura mater is continuous with each spinal nerve where it exits the vertebral column. The arachnoid matter is located between the outer dura mater and the inner pia mater. Between the arachnoid matter and the pia mater is the arachnoid space. This is where the cerebral spinal fluid is contained. The arachnoid space or subdural space is almost non-existent during normal life. It becomes more apparent in histological preparations. This arachnoid space can be accessed in the region caudal to the second lumbar vertebrae, and this is where epidural injections and infusions are delivered. The innermost layer of the meninges is the pia mater. This is a delicate layer that protects the spinal cord, and it covers the spinal cord and brain. Within the elastic and collagen fibers of the pia mater is the blood supply of the spinal cord. The pia mater is held in place through the interaction of the collagen fibers and the astrocyte projections that extend from the spinal cord itself. Special denticulate ligaments extend along the length of the spinal cord and connect the pia mater and the arachnoid matter to the dura mater. These ligaments begin at the occipital bone of the skull and function by limiting side-to-side -side movement of the spinal cord. Now let's look at the histology of the spinal cord, including the ascending and descending tracts. At the anterior side of the spinal cord is an anterior median fissure. At the posterior side is a posterior median sulcus. And working from the posterior side moving laterally are two of the sensory ascending tracts, the fasciculus gracilis and the fasciculus cuneatus. Also the posterior spinal cerebellar tract and the anterior spinal cerebellar tract are lateral on the spinal cord. Towards the anterior is the lateral spinal thalamic tract and the anterior spinal thalamic tract. On the left side of the image are some of the motor descending tracts, including the anterior cortical spinal tract, the tectospinal tract, the vestibulospinal tract, and the lateral reticulospinal tract. On the lateral side is the rubrospinal tract and the lateral cortical spinal tract. Down through the center of the spinal cord is the central canal. The spinal cord is made up of gray matter, which contains nerve cell bodies and blood supply, and the white matter. The spinal cord is composed of an inner core of gray matter surrounded by a thick covering of white matter tracts that are often called columns. Each half of the spinal gray matter is divided into a dorsal horn, an intermediate zone, and a ventral horn. The white matter is divided into the dorsal, ventral, and lateral columns. The gray matter of the spinal cord contains the neuron cell bodies which form special nuclei. The sensory nuclei receive and relay sensory information and the motor nuclei transmit motor impulses. Located within the spinal cord white matter are the special white matter tracts. The white matter contains bundles of nerve fibers that travel within the spinal cord and these are divided as ascending and descending tracts. The ascending tracts conduct sensory impulses that enter the spinal cord and deliver them up to the brain. They are named based on the target region within the brain. Examples of ascending tracts include the anterior spinal thalamic tract, which conveys touch and pressure sensations up to the thalamus. The lateral spinal thalamic tract, which conducts pain and temperature impulses. The descending tracts convey impulses from the brain into the spinal cord gray matter, then out to the periphery. These tracts include the cortical spinal tract, which conveys motor impulses from the brain to the skeletal muscles, and the rubrospinal tract. This conveys fine motor impulses.